different from sermon title, okay? Like, uh, we, we're going to look at that today uh, about sermon title. So, um, uh, we're going to, uh, so, so sermon topic would be, you know, what is the subject the, uh, that, you know, your sermon is going to be addressing, right? What is that uh, that you're going to be uh, talking about, right? So, that is the sermon topic. So, you know, topic like do or have so can you just tell us like what do you have in mind uh, for the sermon uh, are you going to talk about okay. the presence of god no basically um, and do you uh, discuss do you and uh, it's used in the believer's life like um, um it comes um, in and out of season Okay, even this deal. So it's it's a sort of sustenance, an all year round sustenance. That is the point. Mm. So so that would be something like a, that you would use to illustrate, uh, you know, uh, in the life of a believer that what does the due refer to? What is the due symbolic of? Maybe it's freshness. Or even do something that is, uh, you know, something that is very not very permanent. You know, it can it can be used to explain both things, right? When the sun comes up, the dew uh, disappears. So the impermanence of something, um, and also dew can you know you can talk about the freshness of uh, uh, you know how it uh, uh, the refreshing uh, how this dew on the soil or dew on the grass which refreshes so um so it could refer to both but um, so the uh, so that is what i'm saying you know uh, uh, you can make changes to that i feel that you should uh, because it's uh, it's not a topic it is uh, it is uh, maybe something that is used to illustrate a point in the sermon um, so a sermon can be about <clears throat> the bigger picture you know, of the sermon the, the, the subject what you're actually focusing on uh, will be something else right so you think about it and then you know you can make changes so the reason it's there in the sheet you know you can always uh, you know you change your mind and say okay uh, I want to you know maybe make a change you can do that Right, so you have that flexibility. Um, so you can do that. Okay, thank you, Sudan, for reminding about the recording. And okay, let's pray, and then um, we we'll just go. Yeah, okay. Okay, let's pray. Um, Father, we thank you, Lord. We thank you for this uh, day. We thank you for this time. We thank you, Lord, and even as we equip ourselves, um, Lord, to be. Uh, your spokespersons, Lord, to be ambassadors. Uh, Lord, may we do so with humility. May we do so, Lord, um, Lord, living things out, Father God, that we will not just be proclaimers and pointing people to the truth, but, uh, Lord, that our lives itself will be a powerful message, uh, louder and clearer, uh, and even clearer and louder than the words that we articulate, God, the, the, the words that we speak out, God. I pray that uh, uh, it will be louder, God. And I just pray that we'll be able to, Lord, uh, echo and declare, just like what Paul says, uh, that we, we can boldly say, you know, uh, imitate me as I imitate Christ, or follow me as I follow Christ. Um, I pray that you will bring us to that place, Father God, of maturity, of Christ-likeness, and that's what we desire. We thank you. We give you all the praise. We come at this time into your mighty hand. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay. Okay, so um, let's... Um, but yeah, yeah, let's just uh, go into uh, today's class, and even as we... Um, you know, look at the topic of um, sermon construction, putting together an outline. Uh, I hope that will give more clarity about the sermon topic and, uh, you know, you can make changes as we go along, right? So you have access to that sheet, uh, Excel sheet, uh, so you can go and, you know, you think about it, pray about it, what is it that you'd like to, you know, have as your sermon topic, and then we go on. So we'll make changes to that sheet. I'll add one more column there, uh, which will be sermon title. Okay, I see a lot of uh, uh, people have started entering. Abhishek, Subhajit, 
Okay, sermon title is also something that I would um, put here, and we can end up, enter later, right? So, <clears throat> so the sermon topic talking about uh, yeah the voice of his word. Uh, okay, so Subhajit, you can just clarify a little more, okay, um, about the sermon topic. Okay, anyway, um, I'll just leave it there um, right now. We look at the notes. Uh, we're on page 29. Okay. So last session, last class, we looked at uh, uh, three kinds of sermons primarily, right? Um, we looked at, uh, 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 you know, the expository sermon. Then we looked at the textual sermon. And we also looked at the topical sermon. Right, so uh, we we saw what the differences were, what the advantages, and so it's really we have the freedom to choose any of these uh, methods in order to convey the message. Right, so we can, uh, and each one has a purpose, uh, and uh, maybe it will suit a particular, you know, a particular occasion, right, uh, where you are, uh, where you are present to share the word. Right, so, um, so we can based on that, you know, we have the flexibility to choose a, a sermon type and then, and go with it. And 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 like we were saying, you know, if it's a, if it's a church, a congregation or a fellowship, and where we are, you know, and and you're journeying together, you know, uh, as the Lord leads, and so you have more opportunities for, uh, yeah, you know, to come back and share the word to the same audience. So you could have uh, a combination of these uh, kinds of sermons. Therefore, um, you know, so you have, especially when it comes to expository uh, sermons, and then you have time to, you know, study in a series and study methodically and, uh, and the church, you know, grows and uh, is built spiritually. Right? So you, you can have all these kinds of sermons in, in, uh, in that kind of a setting. Okay, so so let's look at uh, the mechanics of sermon construction. Okay, so while you know the Lord Jesus did promise that you know when you're brought up to a place uh, where you are persecuted and where you are you know you're challenged for your faith, and then He did say then you know don't premeditate on what your defense is going to be. Right, He says uh, you don't have to you know think beforehand what you're going to you know speak and what you're going to say, but um, but the Father will speak. You know the Holy Spirit will help you, will give you the words to speak, and you can and you'll be able to and speak that out. And uh, I think Peter did that, Peter, in, uh, in, in the, you know, in the temple when they were brought before the people, uh, when they were brought before the leaders and, uh, you know, they did that. They, uh, you know, spoke boldly and courageously and though they were untrained men and people uh, kind of took note of that, right? So while that is true, uh, it does not excuse us from studying and preparing and uh, and planning uh, what we want to share. Okay, what we want to share. now now this is uh, this is this is an example that I heard, and it's it's wonderful, it's amazing, it's mind blowing, uh, 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 and it's uh, you know what Pastor Ashish shared once. Uh, this was early days of uh, church, and uh, and how he went. Uh, uh, to share a message uh, one particular uh, service and it was on a i think it was a christmas day yeah it was a christmas day okay so uh, well he he knew uh, you know uh, what he could, he could share about uh, about christmas and he had studied and and etc read the word and so uh, typical christmas day message you know about the savior being born and and so on so he he kind of uh, you know knew that but he was just waiting on the lord okay so god is there anything Anything that's specific. So he said, uh, he says that, you know, the day before the service, uh, well, nothing, no message, nothing. Um, on the day of the service, you know, he's spending time praying, no message, nothing. And he says, uh, you know, uh, the worship was happening, no message, <laughs> you know, uh, what, uh, no idea what to speak on. Uh, of course, there are these thoughts, okay, I can, you know. The things are there, but you know what should he speak on? Um, then he says, you know, uh, the worship got over, and it was time for him to go to the podium and share the word. And as he took those, um, you know, four or five steps, you know, it's it's not like a location where we are, a venue where we are, where you walk up to the stage. It is just there, you know, 
maybe three steps, four steps, and you're there. So he's sitting right in front as well. So in those four steps, uh, there was a download of the the message, entire message. Okay, and uh, it is what you you would see in the book um, uh, uh, Kingdom Builders, I think. Yeah, where, where he talks about the Mary miracle. Okay, uh, about protecting the work, uh, about uh, nurturing the work, and uh, when he talks about the you know spiritual and the natural and and so on. So um, so that whole thing came as a download uh, uh, from God. As he took those four steps, now it's it's wonderful, you know, and that happens super, right? Uh, you're just walking up to the podium to pray and uh, you know start, and then wow, here comes the message, and you know you just deliver that, and everyone thinks wow, oh wow, he must have spent hours preparing, but you know he says that he just those four steps is what he took, and he got that message, and in fact he went back and uh, and you know kind of wrote it down because it was all you know, in his mind and in his heart. So he wrote it down and uh, and that's, you know, part of that chapter in the book as well. So so that's the thing. And so it's wonderful when that happens and uh, praise God when that happens. Uh, and there are times when, when you know, when, when those kind of things happen. Um, but uh, it's, we, there, it is no excuse. While God will move, while God does move in those manners, it's no excuse for us to, uh, go before him, pray, spend time, study the word, you know, sometimes wrestle, um, grapple with the truth, and, and then, you know, spend time studying, preparing, putting things together, putting things together in a meaningful, uh, you know, a logical manner so that for the hearer, it it helps, for the hearer, it um, it it makes sense, and they're able to retain they're able to apply, right? It is not just to hear and to just go, but they're able to take back, retain, apply it, live it out, and see the power of uh, the word that was shared, right? Transformative power uh, of the word that was shared. So, um, so that is the thing. So we, we look at this sermon study and the outline, you know, sometimes maybe that thought crosses, you know, are we making a big fuss about something? You know, are we making a big noise about this uh, really but some of it is wisdom it is just looking back and saying okay you know this you could do this you could do that right and uh, and all the while we are depending on god for the for the you know for the inspiration for the thoughts and for the emphasis and so on right so here are some things that we're going to look at now it is, it is helpful if we would you know, take take it, and you know, maybe, and and also always the flexibility is there. We can modify it, we can change it. This is not set in stone, okay. But this is helpful, and it is helpful in a day and time when there's a lot of clutter, and when especially when, uh, you know, we are using media. And so, you know, uh, the other day, uh, someone texted me to say, you know, um, they were watching an Instagram. Uh, on Instagram, there you have these uh, on the story, you know, this a few few seconds, I think thirty seconds or whatever, and that was so, you know, uh, it was about last Sunday's message about the redemption, what Pastor shared, and and they were just you know praying about something and and you know struggling uh, over some of the struggles that they're going through, and the, and this came as a very refreshing thing, and it came right through. It was very concise, and it was just those three or four things and about redemption and it's really edified them. It was like an answer, right? So it can be very powerful. At the same time, you know that it needs to be presented in a, in a meaningful, uh, logical manner for it to be, you know, uh, in that uh, form, like media, uh, in that media, right? So, so that's, uh, you know, so that's why we're looking at all this. Okay, okay. so uh, preparation, um, again, we go to God, we spend time, we receive, we, we put down, and when we arrange it in a, in a manner, so it's good to think about a title. Okay? Now, what is the difference between a, the topic and the title? You know, like um, some of you, you know, you could, you've put, uh, I think, yeah, let me look at a topic here. 
the humility of a servant king. Okay, I think Rosie just entered it there. Okay, the humility of a servant king. So, um, so I think that would be more like a title, uh, Rose. You know, you're talking about uh, God's humility, or you know, so you could probably uh, you know rephrase your sermon topic, maybe humility in general, right? So, okay, let's say we're talking about humility uh, being a being a topic, uh, uh, maybe humility of the believer. Here, Rose is talking about humility of the servant king, right? How God, being God, is also a servant. So humility, God's humility. Um, so the title can be, uh, you know, something that is um, talking about the sermon, something which is like, which points to the sermon, which creates awareness of the sermon, creates excitement about the sermon, like the title of a book or the, the you know the the book cover design really you know and uh, uh, well it's not just the words in today's time it's not just the words but also the the visual that goes with it right because um, you're sharing the word and you're giving a title and uh, maybe you know you capture that as a document and you you put it on you know maybe a blog uh, or you have a website you put it there or uh, you know you upload it for your facebook uh, you know you ha your friends can see it and you put it there and and maybe as a, you know something on instagram you know so it helps to have a visual a picture uh, a graphic image um, a graphic design which conveys that as well. But that's a, just a, you know, uh, that's an added thing, but you know, not really, um, it's not something that you should, you know, go on work about or get worked about, you know, when you're pre preparing the outline, but I'm just saying it is helpful, right? Uh, so the title, okay, so, uh, so you you see the difference, you know. Let's say that uh, let's take this example of uh, you know Rose's uh, a sermon topic about God's humility. The title could be something something else. Okay. So what do you think uh, could be a title? You know, any suggestions? Okay. We are we are addressing um, you know the sermon topic being God's humility. Okay. Yeah, I, I'm just assuming that that could be a sermon topic. So, what could be a sermon title? What could what would be a uh, something that could point to God's humility? Anyone? There's no right or wrong. You know, obviously, you can bearing fruit. Mm, okay, that's being uh, effective in ministry. Our uh, life being productive. Right, so when you say bearing fruit, it uh, points to that, right? Anything, anything that would. Uh... It's, sorry, sir. Uh, if I may ask, uh, the topic is God's humility. Is it? Is this talking about God's himself humb humbling himself so that we we can approach him, or is it talking about? Uh, us putting on God's humility. So, thank you. Um, yeah, so I mean, this is Rose's topic. I just uh, kind of uh, rephrased it this way. Um, so yeah, so it could go either way. You know, it could be, be about, uh, from what I see, uh, it is about the servant king, you know, the fact that he humbled himself. Um, it is a contrast of being king that, and then being servant at the same time. Okay. So there you have the answer. So that's the thing. So here are some titles, okay? Power of being humble, okay? Washing your disciples' feet, okay? That's, uh, okay. I'm just thinking of um, uh, a song that we, uh, you know, came up with last, uh, the God's power to be humble, okay? The lamb side of the lion, nice. Um, so you see uh, the difference between the topic and the title, right? So I'm just thinking of uh, of first line of a song, holy yet humble. Uh, it, it's not a contrast, but uh, that was the first line of the song that we, you know, wrote uh, a song called "What Love Is This," We're talking about holy yet humble, and you know, thing. So um, you know, or uh, sovereign. 
and humble or something like that you know so yeah oops so you get the you get the idea right so uh, give it a title so when when giving it a title uh, here are some things that we can think of so for your sermon topic also you know i just put that uh, added that column there so you give it a title you know think about okay Tarun said hearing god's voice so you can choose a title okay so this, here are some things to think about when we are giving a title okay um, powerful yet humble yes so um, the title let it let it um, talk about the main theme of the message okay what is the main content of the message it's about the humility of this great god uh, the fact that um, that he humbled himself and uh, you know came down and uh, and being a servant and uh, the fact that you know uh, you know that he did both right? the reality of one uh, did not prevent him from being this like right? the, the fact that he's all powerful awesome omnipotent uh, didn't really stop him from you know keeping that aside that that glory and walking in sonship glory right so um, so let the title reflect that let the title point to that okay so let the title also not confuse the audience let it not confuse the uh, content okay so now i know there is uh, you know there is uh, this whole thing of uh, being abstract um you know being abstract and uh, and and talking about uh, you know and, and and also you know stirring the curiosity uh, of uh, of the audience right stirring up the curiosity of the audience you think about you're looking at the title and it's like wow uh, i think uh, I, I want to listen to that message. Okay, so um, so Charles, the question is, which is bigger, the title or the topic? Obviously, the topic is uh, is what the meat is. You know, it's is what the heavy. Uh, uh, it's 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 definitely weighty and important. But a title would um, uh, would point to that. You know, your your topic is going to be the whole content of the message. But the title would uh, it's it's um, uh, you know it's something that points to that. And we're just looking at some of the practical things which help us to come up with a good title. And uh, the importance of the title really is uh, in today's day and time is because of the visibility, you know, because of the uh, various avenues we have in putting the message out. Uh, you know, uh, if it's on social media, you know, you put a hashtag and, and people are able to access it when they are searching for something. Um, therefore, uh, having a you know a good title, a title that uh, that is uh, that captures the attention uh, is is good. So that's why we are you know. So it's not about. It's really uh, the, obviously the topic matters, um, but uh, the title would help uh, because of the you know opportunities we have to reach people. Right. Okay. So it's it should not obscure the content. Uh, it should be simple and communicate well complementing the message. Um, uh, it's all there in the notes, you know, you can always refer to it and while coming out with a title. Um, it should provide a good atmosphere for the sermon. You know, the thing is, um, sometimes uh, uh, it, it, it really helps set the tone uh, for the sermon. Right? Set the tone for the sermon, whether it's going to be a light message, whether it's going to be, uh, you know, uh, with a little bit of humor and all that. Uh, but also, you know, something important being conveyed. So it kind of sets the atmosphere, the tone of the sermon. Okay, so the title could be in the form of a question. It could be a phrase. Um, it could be something related to. You know, the list is endless. You know, you can just go uh, wild with uh, and creative about uh, bringing a title. But for us to just, um, you know, keep this in mind, it would help. Okay, okay, so. Having done that, son of God, son of man, yeah. So these are, you know, classic titles. Um, yeah. Okay, so you think about it and you come up with a title. Okay, then the next thing is the introduction. Okay, as you're putting together, we're not really talking yet about the outline, but really to um, think about the introduction. Okay, so the introduction is the process by which uh, the speaker prepares the audience. Okay, now this is what we are going to be talking about. Um, this is what uh, we uh, 
uh, we are going to be addressing you know, this morning or afternoon uh, an introduction. So, introduction. Um, so it kind of prepares the people. It um, people are thinking about various things, obviously, uh, and it kind of brings them, uh, you know, to focus on this one thing. So, it, it's these are your opening comments. Um, so it's it's good to, uh, you know capture the attention of the audience. It's good to um, um, get their interest, arouse their curiosity, and and start, right? So it's, in that sense, it's essential. Rather than kind of diving in, uh, you know, whatever you say is actually the introduction, um, because you're introducing uh, yourself, maybe introducing the topic. We're looking at introdu introduction of the message, of the content, right? Um, so what it's, you know, your introduction would be a pre-introduction. Okay, maybe you're thanking people. Uh, maybe you're, you know, thanking the pastor, thanking whoever gave you the opportunity, and maybe saying hello, you know, to everyone. It's a kind of a pre-introduction, but you know, when we say introduction, we are actually talking about the introduction of the um, of the sermon, of the message that you are conveying, right? So um, it, that is, in that sense, that's the introduction. So um, so it, you can take your time with it, but always be aware of the length of this message. You know, what time do you actually have? Is it ten minutes? Then obviously the introduction has to be less than a minute, right? You just do that. You know, maybe it's just a 10 minute thing that you're maybe recording and putting it out there. So obviously you can't spend too much time on that. Uh, you just say what, what you're going to be talking about, uh, uh, you know, hello and welcome and just get straight away into it. Okay, maybe less than a minute or so. Uh, but if it's going to be, uh, let's say 45 minutes, then obviously you have the luxury of uh, giving uh, an introduction, spending some time on it, uh, but also not too much time. Okay. Um, so as they say, well begun is half done. So you know, it's uh, think about that uh, and uh, introduce the theme of the sermon. Okay, so there are many ways by which you can uh, uh, by which you can you know start uh, or introduce or have your introduction. Um, it could be a biographical introduction. You know, it could be a short. Uh, you know, story. It could be a quotation. It could be, you know, I've I've had people just come up and start singing, and you know, it could be words of the song. It could be you know, a song itself, a part of a song. Um, so it can be some something from the a text from the sermon itself that you want to, or maybe some quote, you know, based on the sermon that you came up with that you want to emphasize, but you start with that, saying God is a good God, no matter what you're going through. Well, you know, that's how you're setting the tone uh, for the message, right? Now, I just want to share with us uh, a, a introduction that I heard uh, some years back. And this is by uh, a person by name, uh, Dr. Chris Nyanakan. He was, at that time, he was teaching in SIAX, uh, one of the seminaries, Bible colleges here. And uh, he, he actually... I think he starts uh, most of his messages with a kind of introduction like this. So it's a poem that he wrote, and it's it was it is on the Bible, okay, on the Word of God, and I found that uh, really captivating. So I'm just putting it here. So it's called the My Precious Old Book, okay, Dr. Krishnanakin. So let me just read it. Okay, so he just comes and he, you know he does all the pre-introductory talk, and then he just goes. Uh, I, th I think he just goes into this itself. He just says, Though the cow be torn and its pages be worn, and places bear traces of tears, yet more precious than gold is this book worn and torn that can shatter and scatter my fears. As I prayerfully look in this precious old book, many treasures and pleasures I see. Um, many promises of love from my father above who is nearest and dearest to me. This book is a guide, is a friend by my side. It will lighten and brighten my day. And each promise I find, okay, the only part of it is there. Each promise I find, let me just put the other part also. Um, the other two verses, I think there's a word limit in what I can copy paste. Um, 
Okay, there we go. This book is a guide, is a friend by my side. It will lighten and brighten my day. And each promise I find soothes and gladdens my mind as I preach it and teach it each day. To this book I will cling, of its worth I will sing, though many crosses and losses be mine. For I cannot despair, though surrounded by care, while possessing this blessing divine. Okay, so, and then he goes on to say something which you, some cliche which you might have heard, you know, you carry the Bible and the Bible carries you, uh, something like that, and then he goes on to the message. But this, you know, he has some variations of, two or three variations of this, uh, of this poem, which he uh, starts off with. So, you know, something like this, is, it's a nice, uh, you know, way to introduce, but as long as your, you know, some way you can relate it to the topic of your, what you're going to share, or uh, maybe it's just uh, you know something uh, unrelated, but you need to be have you need to be able to transition from here into the topic. Obviously, you're going to talk about the God of the Bible, and you're going to talk about uh, you know the power of, power of the Word or the encouragement that is in the Word, and you know, and you can share that. So, so, um, so this is something uh, you know. Like it could be a poem. It could be. Um, it could be a quote. It can be very, very powerful. And it also set the tone, right? Um, it also depends on what kind of a, you know, what kind of a message it is. So you set the tone, you know, it can be something, maybe you're a person, you're just going to be, uh, you know, really good at preaching it. You know, when I say preaching it this morning, you know, uh, pre uh, you know on that occasion, you're going to be really, um, you know, powerful declarations. You're going to be making some declarations. It's going to be, well, it's going to be, uh, kind of uh, uh, kind of dramatic in the way you're going to do it right you just feel that yeah, I just need to I just need to send this message you know what I mean I just need to preach it I need to uh, I need to tell it what it is you know I need to declare it I need to shout it out right so it sets the tone the introduction sets the tone so you can't really have an introduction where you say you know you just mum you know you're all soft and uh, you know, I just want to praise God for what He's, you know, what He's about to do this morning, and then suddenly go on and say, "God is a good God." You know, it's, it's, it seems uh, really jarring. It doesn't seem to. Uh, it kind of, uh, it's, it, it's dissonant, right? It uh, rather than bring an attention, it actually causes, uh, you know, the opposite thing, right? So, yeah, so you can do that. Also. Well, if you've you know seen some speakers, humor, you know, you start with a joke. Uh, I've seen some preachers, you know, read out some jokes. Now, if the audience doesn't get the joke, it bounces, it just bombs back on you, and you have to do a lot to get the audience back. Right? If people don't understand the joke, or if you're not used to, you know, sharing a joke, then it's going to be really difficult. You know, if that's not your style. Okay, so I remember the story about um, this preacher, and uh, you know, and said, you know, what pastor? You're so serious. You know, you should have some jokes in your message. So, and he got fed up of getting this. Uh, is this a theme as the topic? Um, sorry, Charles. Is the theme as the topic? I don't understand. Um, yeah, so what, what you're asking is, is the theme the same as the topic? Yeah, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. It's more or less the same thing, yes. Yeah. Okay, so what was it saying? Okay, so everybody said, you know, preacher, you know, you know, you need to... You need to have a joke, and then it's okay. So he said, "Okay, I'll I'll tell a joke." So, so he just thought of something, and he read something, and he said, "Okay, uh, Sunday morning, you know, he goes there, and he says, okay, um, I just want to tell you this.'" So the joke joke was very simple. He just wanted to shock the audience. So he said, uh, "You know, last evening I held a woman in my arms," and uh, so second line, that woman was not my wife. So everybody's sh shocked. And then he would say, it was my mother. OK, so so that was a joke. So he he just, uh, he's not used to sharing jokes. So he just, you know, just made this joke up. He's, he's all ready. He goes on Sunday morning. And uh, he goes to the audience and the Sunday morning service and um, says, it's time for him to preach. He goes and says, last night, I held a woman in my arms. The audience is, you know, they're not used to this part, part, 
you know, pastor preaching like this. So they're like standing, you know, sitting on the edge. What is he saying? They got this. He's got their attention. Second line, he says, it was not my wife. And everybody goes, oh, shock now. Complete silence. And then the pastor forgets the third line. <laughs> he thinks about it. And then he says the second line again, it was not my wife. <laughs> And he's, he forgets the third. His mind is absolutely blank. And then he tells, he confesses to the audience. He says to the church, he says, "I forget. I forget who's who I was holding in my arms." And you know, absolute disaster. Right? It what was supposed to be a joke, what was supposed to, and he's like, you know, he says, "I forget who 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 I was holding in my arms." So, you know, so that's the thing, just to tell you that uh, you need to be careful about using humor. It can bomb, you know, bounce back. It can be, and it's going to be very difficult to, you know, uh, lift from there or recover from there. Okay. So uh, use humor. And I mean, it, that's fine. But if it is something related to the message, if it is something, you know, uh, uh, you know, that you can, that is, that is what you're used to use it. Otherwise, do not, right? Okay. Um, yeah, sometimes we might have a pre-introductory thing, like, you know, you're thanking, you're welcoming, uh, you you know, you can do that. Okay, so we looked at title. We looked at introduction. Um, we looked at, um, okay, yeah. When should the introduction be written as you begin? or after the whole message has been written down? Well, yeah, that's a good question. Um, it uh, See, if you're inspired to start a message in a certain way, um, I mean, this has been my, uh, you know, this has been my experience probably for someone, it could be different. So, um, you know, as and when, uh, like God gives these thoughts, I just put it down and I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm putting it in a logical sequence and order. Um, and, you know, sometimes the, these illustrations come and I'm just, you know, putting it here and putting it there. Um, and then, uh, uh, it, so it doesn't come in any order. You know, and I, I think about it and then I, I don't get any thoughts. I'm not inspired in any way um, to have that kind of an introduction and then I just leave it, you know, I just leave it for some time, just pray about it, leave it and, and ask the Lord. So it need not be uh, right then and there. It can come in later also, or how you're going to end the message also, you know, um, how we want to end the message, how we want to conclude with prayer and, and so on. So um, that also, you know, you, it doesn't have to be, you know, in the logical thing. It uh, can come in later, right? But uh, it's normally with me. Uh, maybe for others, it works differently. So, yeah. Right. So, okay. So let's look at um, let's look at uh, uh, the next one, which is the proposition. Okay. So, so it's um, a declaration of the topic that you're of the subject. Okay. So when it comes to uh, uh, it's you're talking about the big idea or the central idea or the central theme of the thing that you're going to be um, talking about. So it's good to, uh, 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 you know, share about this. Uh, what is that big thing? It can be, uh, uh, it, it's, it's good, helpful to ask these questions. Okay. Um, two questions. Okay. Uh, what am I talking about? And uh, what am I saying about what I'm going to talk about? Okay. What am I going to talk about? And uh, what am I going to say about what I'm going to talk about? You know, it's, uh, so uh, how am I going to explain that? So ask yourself that question. And if we can write it down, you know, uh, if you can write down what is it that I'm going to talk about? And uh, what is, um, and what am I going to say about that? Okay, uh, maybe it could be two things, three things that you're going to be saying. And so if you can just put that together and and have it as one statement um, and share it, you know, that's that, that we would call as a proposition. 
you share it right at the beginning and uh, and you you share that right so you can write out in a sentence um, uh, maybe if you want to try it you can you can try that out let's say um, okay, I see some more um, sermon topics here um, okay sermon title here okay okay so you can you can try it out you know maybe think about it um, and then try it out okay uh, what are those three things what are those four things um, that i want to uh, you know share what i want to talk about and um, and how am i going to go about doing it we're going to be looking at this this and the other so you can um, you can share that you can uh, so two things you know two questions uh, what is the subject which is you know what am i talking about or what am i going to talk about and a complement to that subject meaning what exactly am I saying, or what am I going to say about what I'm talking about? Right. So, um, so you could, uh, you know, use that as uh, an introduction. Okay. Now, how do we relate? Oh, sorry. Uh, this is the proposition, right? Now, how do we relate the proposition to the main points of the sermon? Okay. So, so normally from this proposition, how do we go into uh, the main points of the sermon? So it can be, uh, you know, what is called an in interrogative sentence. Okay. So um, you ask a question. Okay. Let's say, um, let me take a topic. Okay. Uh, hearing from God is what uh, Tarun has uh, put up. Okay. So, so we'll probably have a proposition like today. Uh, we're going to look at. Um, yeah, well, God is a speaking God, and uh, we're going to look at, uh, you know, can man actually hear what God is saying? Uh, we're going to look at the ways which God speaks and, uh, and the ways we can position, posture ourselves to hear God and hear him clearly. Okay. Then, uh, you know, and then you can have a transitional uh, sentence or a transitional uh, statement to go into the main outline. Okay, so that would be uh, in the form of a question. So, so uh, where do we start? You know, uh, does God speak today? Like that's an interrogative um, statement, right? You're asking a question. So, does God really speak today? Okay, in in today's day and time, is it a reality? Does God speak? And then you go into maybe quoting a scripture. Okay, um, that that God is alive and God is a speaking God and uh, and these are the and and He speaks, you know, in in answer to that interrogative question, and uh, so that's a transition from the proposition, from the big idea, into the outline of the message. Okay, so is that uh, is that fine? Any uh, any doubts? Any questions so far? Um, Okay. I think it's it's fairly simple, right? So, um, but uh, but I I really like us to you know begin to put together an outline, so um, you can use these. Right? Yeah, Charles, I have a question. Now, hey, when it has come to the proposition, uh, yeah. like does God speak today, and like it can be in the introduction, I am. Um, I am now looking at the, like the, in the in the <clears throat> in the PDF it says ideally each sermon is the explanation interpretation or application of a single dominant idea supported mm -hmm. by other ideas or drawn from one passage or several passages of the scripture so now I'm looking at the proposition now this is now the way you, the, the preacher, the one who is going to preach, the way you have formulated either a question or a statement. So it is your, it's your personal, personal um, idea that though it is based on the, on the scripture, but it is so now your interpretation, how you are going to express it. Is that, am I getting it right? Like that? Yeah. So, so the proposition. So we are saying a dominant thought, idea, big idea. You know, that's the, that is the, the what the message is about, and uh, the proposition is going to be uh, stating that. So you're just stating that idea, and um, and yeah. So from that, you state that idea, and then when you 
get into the message you uh, a one way to transition or move from that to the message would be to ask you know uh, to would we have would, would be to have an interrogative statement now it's a suggestion right you can and it's it's but it's a good effective transition where you can ask a question you know um just like that example that we said you when it comes to hearing god you know you can just ask a question you know, does god speak today uh, and then you quote a scripture and then go into it yeah can, can so, i can i inquire can i inquire as in something like a link like like you are begin you are moving from the introduction and you are going to go into your main thing so you you are linking you are, you are getting a connective tissue is 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 it like that yeah yeah exactly see uh, yeah yeah charles that, that's that's exactly that right so you just uh, from there you just going into the message so the thing is we we normally uh, do it seamlessly you know we we might actually be doing it without um, without even thinking in our you know in our uh, in our presentations and so on but we just uh, uh, just because we put it there it seems a little strange right uh, just because we are looking at it uh, as one of the elements of some uh, you know uh, some construction it it seems a little strange but actually normally we do things do these actually uh very naturally you know this kind of a transition yeah so but what you what you're saying is right okay um so okay i guess we'll stop here um and then we we'll, yeah we'll get into the actual putting together the outline and the uh you know illustrations and so on now you know um we we'll, you know when when we actually come it comes to the presentation it's um, it's a simplified thing but we are looking we are breaking things down we are looking at it in detail so maybe it seems like oh man uh, this is how a sermon should be or uh, uh, well these are elements of uh, you know of uh, an outline elements of uh, you know this would help us uh it would help us to be effective right uh, so that's the only thing okay okay so we'll stop here and uh we'll uh, we'll meet on monday uh, for the other class um, just read through you know that exercise uh, about psalms uh, sorry not psalms parables which we were talking about uh, for those of us who've not okay um just read through that and also with regard to this um subject if you can um, you know think about the sermon topic and finish it the sermon title um that will be great okay so thank you god bless uh we'll catch up again on monday bye bye thank you pastor All right bye 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 thank you pastor god bless Thank hey, you see pastor. You. See you back, uh, bye bye. See you guys. Bye bye. Thank you pastor. Bye bye. Thank you.